So welcome everyone to the Selenium conference. Uh, we have two wonderful speakers, Srinivasan and Shekhar and Shai Krishna with us. We're very glad to have you both here today. And uh, let's, without any delay, jump into our session, build your own APM2 driver. Hey, thanks, Veena. Hello, everyone. Morning, good evening, different time zones. Uh, thanks for joining our session today. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, how do you want to build your own APM driver? Uh, and uh, along with Appium Driver, we're going to say Appium 2.0 uh, with it. Uh, we're not going to touch base a lot into uh, Appium 2.0 as a part of this session. Uh, we're going to probably uh, talk at a very high level where are we with uh, 2.0 uh, and focus more on how you can build on uh, uh, drivers, uh, which is some awesome stuff that Appium 2.0 has given us. Uh, before we get in, a quick intro about ourselves. Uh, myself, Sai, and I work for uh, ThoughtWorks as a lead consultant. And uh, I'm quite passionate about open source. So I do a quite a lot of open source contribution and I'm an active contributor to uh, Appium, Selenium, Tyco, and I'm also present in a lot of conferences as well. Uh, and uh, yeah, that's me. And Srini, over to you. Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. And I'm Srinivasan Shekhar. And I'm also a lead consultant at ThoughtWorks. And uh, uh, I'm a contributor and maintainer for Appium's Java client and contributor to various open source uh, repositories, including Selenium, Appium, uh, WebDriver.io, Tyco, and a lot more. And I am speaker in various international conferences, including Selenium Conf, Appium Conf, uh, Agile India, and a lot more. And these are my Twitter handles and GitHub handle. And today we are going to go through about what's the current state of Appium, which is Appium 2.0, and what does drivers actually mean? And we are going to build one. Uh, we are going to do some live coding. Hopefully, it goes, uh, it comes up very well. And we are, gonna, uh, we are going to have a short Q&A at the end, but feel free to drop your questions in between if you have any. One of us will be able to pass in between and take it up. And don't hesitate. Feel free to drop it, and we'll be able to pick it up as we speak. So Appium has been there for quite some time and it's more than six, seven years that we have a lot of dot versions on Appium 1.x, right? So it has gone through a lot of evolution and uh, each and every uh, dot release has introduced uh, new features, bug fixes. It has seen so many versions of uh, platforms. Uh, I mean, Android uh, versions and uh, uh, iOS versions with a lot of new different features coming in and going out, right? So uh, with Appium, uh, and it's going to be the end of Appium 1.x very soon, and uh, it's deprecated already, and we are in Appium 2 beta for more than a year, and it's going to be the way forward for uh, every one of us. And uh, uh, we are in a full swing uh, in terms of uh, updating our documentation, and it might soon hit the market with the stable release in a month or so. And uh, uh, special about Appium 2.0 is the plugins that gets introduced in Appium 2.0's architecture. Uh, plugins are nothing but a small piece of code that could uh, help you to uh, introduce in Appium's umbrella without touching anything of the core module. All right. And with respect to drivers, I'm sure with Appium 1.x, if you install Appium server, it does install a bunch of drivers for you folks, right? Even our application under test that we wanted to uh, write a test for probably on iOS, but it might also install several other drivers which we might not use. So this is kind of a pain point for quite a lot of people. So we understood that and with Appium 2.x, it's going to be uh, you install what you want. Let's say if I wanted to automate an iOS app, so you could only install iOS driver, which is the XCUI driver and ignore all the other drivers because you're not going to use it as of now, right? So you could, uh, you install what you want. So the drivers are decoupled from the server. So it's a, a new general decouple the driver architecture that we moved into with also a support for plugins so that you could uh, introduce your own piece of code uh, along with Appium commands to override it or to uh, introduce a new command uh, in the Appium 2.0 umbrella. So given that we have so many drivers uh, we have already, uh, is it possible, Sai, for us to build a new driver in Appium 2.0 uh, world? And how easy or how complex it is? Uh, definitely, it's pretty easy to need to build with, uh, you know, build a driver with 2.0 compared to uh, 1. 
uh, and uh, there are there are just few few steps that we need to follow to actually uh, build build the driver for us um how is it different from appium honda techs because we have seen drivers hitting the market from community on appium honda techs as well right so yeah. what's special about 2.0 see in uh, definitely we could build uh, drivers even in uh, appium 1.x so we have seen a uh, quite a few drivers coming out that way right we have seen flutter driver which is maintained by the community we have seen ui engine driver to automate your ui engine tv apps and stuff right uh, but by 1.0 right uh, you had to make some changes to the core module and one should also understand you know internals of appium as well and there has to always be a connect between the maintenance of the drivers and the core appium team uh, so you see, these were the things that 1.0 had, but with 2.0, right, the kind of uh, drivers that you could build, it's completely decoupled. So you own the driver. So you sort of uh, decide how you want to build your driver and how you want to initialize your driver. So those are the capabilities that Appium 2.0 brings in to build uh, custom drivers for us. You don't have to rely or make any changes into the existing code you know, existing core modules of Appium 2.0, but rather you build your driver and you sort of register that with a current Appium server. An Appium server can understand that, you know what, hey, there's a driver that I've got initialized and probably, you know, any commands flowing into me should get to this driver. Oh, it's that easy. That's great to hear. Let's build and one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Before we jump into build one, Srini, probably there are, like I said, right, there are very few steps that we need to look through, right? Uh, the three steps that anyone would want, should follow when they want to build any drivers is the interface implementation, uh, W3C command mapping, and you and basically you build your driver, right? When we say it's uh, an interface uh, implementation, right? What that means to us. See, Appium driver is uh, just a bit of code, okay? That uh, inherits from some other code within its core uh, Appium model, that's it. And now inheriting from the base driver actually gives us a lot, okay? Because the base driver is essentially an encapsulation of all the web driver protocol commands for us okay and so what that means is so all the driver needs to do is something useful for them to implement right so we talk we just said that there's a flutter driver or probably a ui engine driver right so or even let's take our uh, ui automated tools a driver like a lot of drivers you spoke in a previous slide right so these drivers they they should actually know the responsibilities right and that's what auto, this w3c command mapping holds okay where the driver authors right they should know the internals of the platform that they're trying to automate. Let's say that you want to automate a Raspberry Pi. Okay. So first of all, even before you automate a Raspberry Pi, you really need to know what you want to automate there. Right. And you need to know if I have to automate, what are the commands that I need? Like, how do I interact with Raspberry Pi? How do I make that connection? So those are the, uh, some of the basic things a, a driver author should know of how the internals are working. Okay. And uh, all that they have to do is once they know that, they'll have to map all these required commands to the W3C protocol, as simple as that, right? Because you see over here, the core thing is about mapping them, registering to the server. And once you map it, what is that mapping going to do? That's the important key that the driver should actually know, okay, as authors. And the third part is definitely you build the driver, okay, and you simply register it to the Appium 2 core. And it's that simple, Srini. Wow, that's nice. Maybe we should try to build one. Sure. Let's do that. Cool. I have some oh. bare minimum template. Probably we can take us forward with that. Sure. Uh, I see. Uh, Srini's actually built a simple uh, template, uh, a Node module, uh, a Node.js project. Uh, why Node.js? Simple answer to that. Uh, Appium server is in Node.js, and your plugins and drivers should be in Node.js. It's as simple as that. And that's the reason uh, you have to build your uh, drivers in Node.js, okay? And uh, we'll go step step by step. There are like, like I said, there are three steps, right? So let, let's look into those three steps and what is the prerequisites as well, right? So when you build a bare minimal uh, driver, the first thing when you do an NPM minute, right? It gives you a, a basic uh, empty uh, node, node package. So go into your package.json and the first thing you need to do is inside your dependencies, you add your dependency called your base driver. Right, what Srini is highlighting. So that's a dependency that you need to add. That's the, that's the first thing that you have to do. The second thing is, uh, what you need to do is forget about the other dependencies for now. Basically, we'll come to that. The second thing that you need to look at it over here is in line number 47, all right? You need to create an Appium uh, object over there, which is basically got certain attributes in it. Uh, it's got a driver name, automation name, certain platform names, and main class, okay? So what are these, right? A driver name, itself it's pretty self explanatory it's going to say that hey what is the driver name that you want to call right a meaningful name that you want to give to your driver 
And why do you need a driver name is because you have to tell Appium, right? Hey, this is my driver that I've installed. And this is the driver that you need to activate, right? And that's the reason why we actually need to give the driver name an automation name, right? Like, like any other driver that you have today, like your UI automated to or Espresso or XCUI, if you have you, if you have built some basic scripts in uh, RPM, you would know that automation name is mandatory. You need to tell whether it's an XCUI or a UI automated to, because the internals of RPM says that based on this automation name, it's going to load certain required node modules for us. Okay. We'll keep it at that level at, at this point of time. And when it's platform names, right? You simply tell that, Hey, this driver can only support an Android or this driver can only support Android and iOS, or probably it can only support a, a you know, a Raspberry Pi, right? Something like that. So you need to tell which platform your driver actually supports. Okay. And then you have a main class. It's nothing but, you know, like any other programming, you want to create a class and you want to name it. And that's going to be your main entry entry point for this driver. So you're going to give, give, give an, a main class name right now over here, we have simply named it as Appium template driver. It could be anything that makes sense to build your own driver. Okay. So the main class should have a name and you have to tell, you know, uh, your Appium, the, the node, which we're talking about to say, Hey, this is a main class and you need to load everything there. That's the entry point for us. Okay. And now where does this main class reside? Right? So you see this line number five, which is getting highlighted again. Uh, it's uh, dot slash driver slash driver.js, right? So you create a class, you create a class, you create a file called driver.js, create a class called Appium template driver, whatever you have created down there as a main class name, you simply create that. So you need, can you open the driver.js? So we have created some basic things, keeping our time in mind, and we didn't want to go everything ground up. So you see this, right? So you have an Appium template driver as your main class name, and you see over there, the class name should exactly match. Okay. So they, they both need to be same. They can't be different. Please keep this in mind. They have to be same. Okay. That's, that's the main class that we're talking over here. Okay. And I also see as a part of the main class, right? It extends a base driver. So if you go back to the previous slide, you remember I was talking about the first step is about interface implementation. So basically this is where this is the base driver, which is, got, which is, uh, which is basically an encapsulation of all our W3 or all our web driver protocol commands. Okay. And there are certain things as base driver also exposes for us for the basically it, it, it helps us for certain things in our rebuilding of the driver. Okay. And uh, Srini, I also see in the constructor in line number tell you have something called as this dot desired cap constraints. What's that Srini? Why, why is that needed there? So each and every driver are activated by base driver behind the scenes through an automation name. Let's say we have uh, two different automation backends for Android, a UA Automator 2 and Espresso for uh, uh, Espresso driver. So base driver takes, reads these capabilities and these capabilities is mandatory for any driver. So we have defined that constraint here, that automation name, which is has to be present and it is of type string. So uh, we, we just need to define it here, but the validations will be taken care of by the base driver itself. Okay. And so this can also be uh, any any capabilities that the driver would need, Srini? Yeah, definitely. For example, mm -hmm. let's say if we wanted to add browser name here, we could definitely mm -hmm. add browser name and specify mm -hmm. uh, whether it is mandatory or it's of type string and... Uh, so let's say browser okay. is also mandatory. So you could add it as true. And if it's of type string, then you can say that. So we basically define the constraints here for the driver. Cool. Can this capability be uh, anything, right? See, I know this automation name and browser name, they are, they are like something which is very common even in our Appium core, right? So right. can this capability be anything? Can I name it like, uh, you know, template driver wait? Can I also name it something like that? Yeah, definitely. You could introduce cool. your constraints. Cool. So, uh, so that means, uh, with this, the base driver also is doing all this kind of validation. And uh, as a driver author, we don't have to take care of any of these validations, right? Yes, exactly. Sounds good. That's, that's exciting. That's really cool. And I also see Srini in line 21 and 27, right? You have created two functions, which say is a create session and delete session, right? I mean, of course, uh, the, the, the function, the method name is pretty self-explanatory. We know it's creating a session and delete, deleting a session, right? I mean, why have you explicitly mentioned it as create session, Srini? Why can't I just name it uh, creating a session? Or why can't I name it create under session, right? Or uh, why can't delete be a deleting session? Is this is this some side of uh, 
you know pattern that we have to follow why have you specifically mentioned it as create and delete session so as we extend base driver base driver holds all the routes that appium supports and the commands which appium supports or gets called inside it as well so let's quickly mm-hmm. see what kind of couple, uh, i mean what kind of commands that we have let's say i, I am inside appium's base driver module so uh, we see there is in, i mean we, we see there is a route.js here and which also talks about different i mean all the set of w3c commands that appium supports so it's uh, it, it has the kind of registry for uh, what kind of commands we have what api calls that it makes internally and uh, it depends on the driver whether uh, the uh, driver for example android driver might support x set of commands and ios driver might support y set of commands but you will find all these commands out here in the route.js even if you see here uh, for creating a session it says what kind of api uh, that gets exposed and what kind of command that it gets called internally and whether the uh, arguments for those are optional or those are required all of those are defined here and we just read i mean we just have to say the same command name when we are implementing it in the driver uh, for for example we are implementing it in our template driver so i use the same name as what we saw here for create session and same for delete session as well you might find with a delete command here under the hood yeah you go here so we have the session id it takes a session id and uh, the command for it is delete session so that's the reason why we specify it as the same name as in with uh, route.js commands sounds good so which means from any client now uh, let's let's take any client right it could be java client or webdriver io or any any client we have in selenium uh whenever an object gets created like uh, let's say an android driver or a ios driver right when when any such uh, objects get created and when this driver is registered so you are saying that it would get into line 21 right so this this create session would typically get called right yes and uh, if i have to uh, implement all the w3c uh, web driver protocols uh, for my driver all that i need to do is i need to go to route.js and see what are all the commands that appium has got and i need, i need to map that with the uh, protocol with uh, w3c specs right exactly right. sounds sounds good sounds good cool okay that that's pretty easy uh, i see that we could the way we could map in and build this drivers right so what is that we going to build today sunny now so i remember uh, going through some of the pain points uh, in past for an enterprise client where i had to download a chrome driver very often and uh, it has to go through uh, a lot of tickets and then uh, behind a proxy it has to go through also some kind of screening from the security team and it has to be placed on a separate path as well and uh, all of these takes time and bef- uh, before we get there probably we hit another release of chrome so uh, uh, since chrome uh, dev tools protocol is gaining a lot of traction quite recently and it uh, doesn't need chrome driver it talks talks through web driver i mean it does talk through uh, web socket communication instead of web i mean instead of uh, chrome driver so um, given that we have getting a lot of traction around that and there are tools amazing tools built on top of it like for example we have puppeter we have playwright we also have our own grown taiko uh, built with in thoughtworks and open source right so uh, why don't we build one called the appium cdp driver say you are on mute okay. so you saying that we could build this driver uh, where this driver is going to interact with uh, your browsers on your android devices yeah. like like any any chromium based devices uh, any chromium based uh, browsers right it could be uh, samsung internet browser or a chrome browser or a brave browser any of those which is based on chromium right sweeney exactly you are right okay sounds sounds exciting so how do we do that right so can you tell us like uh, how are you going to connect uh, you know how are you going to make this connection between the server and your your code right so how is that how is that we going to do so we need to make a, a port forwarding first so that uh, we can establish remote connection so i have my mm-hmm. handle device android device and which is connected or displayed here through visor so we have a chrome browser and uh, i mean chromium based browsers in my deck i mean in my mobile so we need to have a, some kind of a remote connectivity 
So mm -hmm. probably let's establish that connection first. I, I could, we could see that I have a device here that's connected and probably let's do a port forwarding first. So how it did kind of a port forwarded just to uh, make sure we have a remote connection and uh, uh, each and of uh, each of these tabs that I have opened, I think I have opened some 48 tabs or so. Uh, since it's my personal device. So uh, each of these tab exposes WebSocket debugger URL. Probably we can use the debugger URL, which is opened uh, remotely. We can uh, hook into the debugger URL and give the debugger URL to one of uh, uh, the CDP implemented uh, tool sets. Let's say mm -hmm. probably for now we can pick Tyco because uh, we have been contributing to Tyco a lot. So uh, you are one of the core contributors. So we know the internals of it quite well. So we can pick that and we can give this debugger URL to uh, Tyco so that uh, uh, the interaction happens via remote and under the hood, it Tyco who takes care of it. Cool, cool. So uh, a we quick thing, Srini, you, you, yeah, I have a, Srini, I have a question here. So you were talk yeah. about, uh, you, you actually basically port forward it. And uh, you want to talk about you're going to take the WebSocket URL and stuff, right? So how are you going to fetch this WebSocket URL, Srini? Exactly. So uh, I, I did launch my browser. It does us some number of tabs already open. Let's see if we are able to get it. Since I have put forwarded to 9241, we can hit mm -hmm. this URL called JSON list and mm -hmm. see it does fetches. Okay. It does fetches some amount of uh, WebSocket URLs here. Mm -hmm. So you basically need this WebSocket URL to, uh, you know, connect to the yes. specific browser so that you could run your uh, Chrome DevTool protocol commands, right? That's what you mean to say here. Yes, that's pretty cool. And this is what I was actually mentioning in the in the previous, right, in the steps where uh, you have this W3C mapping. The the driver authors should actually uh, know the internals of the platform that they're trying to automate, and this very clearly shows that uh, Srini right now knows the internals of his platform that he's trying to automate because he knows that the browser, you know, how do you port forward uh, so that you can open a connection, and along with that, uh, he knows that if you get to the JSON list, it you would get a WebSocket URL, and through the WebSocket URL, we can like make a connection to the browser and send any commands into this, right? And this is where uh, now all that we need to do, Srini is uh, because you know the internals of what you want to do so so we're going to basically map whatever you're trying whatever you did manually into our uh, web driver protocols right exactly sounds good so we can do all of these things like for example i have opened a tab and i also have done port forwarding and also i have hit the url and fetch the uh, websocket mm -hmm. url uh, so that i can give it to Tyco to open a browser right so I can mm -hmm. do all of these things, what I have done manually inside Chrome session, sorry, create session so that uh, we were able to uh, uh, do everything programmatically. So Tyco takes care of all of these things. And uh, and for port forwarding, we used ADB command. Probably we can uh, use one of the Appium ADB node module so that it takes care of uh, port forwarding for us. Sure. Maybe you can help me take me through uh, uh, list of yeah sure so i see the first thing that you did was uh you basically ran a port forward right so to do a port forward you basically need to get a, a connection set up with adb so it's basically nothing but an adb start server right so uh get adb I can have so she, she yeah, Srini, I see you already have this get adb, right? So which means you already uh, prepped for these uh, commands, right, for us? Yes. So whatever I have done manually, I have it in uh, adb.js. So get adb takes care of creating an instance and then uh, some other commands. Uh, also, it does uh, adb.js also have a command for port forwarding. So uh, whatever I have done manually, it's already uh, been added here programmatically. And I have launched the browser manually, right? I have activated the browser tabs manually when I'm uh, trying to load the Chrome tabs, right? So uh, yeah. that's what start application does. So we have this uh, scripted already. Sounds good. So the first thing I see that you open this and uh, you also did a port forward uh, yep. next. Yeah. And uh, the next thing that you did after port forward was you actually opened your browser uh, in your phone. Yep. I have a startup right. application which internally activates the tab or uh, the activity. Okay. Up your okay. 
Okay, and again, you have used a simple ADB start activity, right? Uh, which is coming from Appium for us to start the application. Sounds fair. And uh, once you started the application, uh, you basically went into your browser, you, you like sort of uh, uh, poked your, uh, you know, yeah, the list, right? Wherever your browser is running with all the protocols. So you basically have to fetch uh, one of the WebSocket debug URLs, right, for us? Yes. Okay. So it's kind cool. of a target for me. So I uh, I need to get at least one WebSocket debugger URL so that I could establish socket connection. So mm -hmm. I have a sample. Uh, I have a piece of code which is already written, which could help me to get the target. So what does it do internally, right? So if you go inside, it it does its. It, it it just simply makes an api call to json list to the port number that gets created and uh, it gives me the uh, json response and uh, it kind of keeps on retrying and we are getting the uh, target for appium.io as we see there are 40 tabs that i have opened the title could be different for different and url could be different for different right so I am trying to fetch the target for appium.io and the appium.io is getting launched by default by uh, APM ADB. So that's what I do here, const target, get target. So target kind of gives me the node. So from target, I can able to get the uh, WebSocket debugger URL. Mm -hmm. So now that okay. I have all the pre setup, probably we can hand over all these things to, uh, I mean, we can hand over the WebSocket URL to Tycho. You know, sure. the hand that I could use. Yeah, it's an open browser. So we should typically try to open the browser now. And uh, to the open browser command, you basically give the port, uh, the target, and the host. Okay, port number. Oh, where, do you, where do we get the port, uh, Stini? You never spoke anything about the port. So when you and have. Doing the and port what port forward. is it? Ah, so okay. it's doing the forwarding, right? It does gives me a port number where that uh, where the forwarding has happened. So here in our case, we have forwarded it to nine two four one, and we use the same nine two four one to hit the uh, fetch the list, right? So in case of programmatically, we are trying to get a free port in my Mac machine, and uh, it does uh, returns that free port once. Uh, we have initialized, I mean, once you have done the port forwarding. So we are going to use the same port here so that mm -hmm. uh, Tycho can talk to that port. And then... You give it a host. Host. Host is basically a local host. Uh, I mean, we can give 127.0.0.1. And we also have to give... Uh, target. It it's target. Uh, it's target. We also have to supply the target to... Uh, so target kind of gives me the complete object, but what we exactly need is WebSocket debugger URL. So I will take this WebSocket debugger URL and supply this to Tycho. Open browser is something that comes from Tycho. We have it uh, imported from Tycho here, if you see here. Yeah. And you see over here, right, as a part of create session, the responsibility of the driver over here, so responsibility of Srini was over here to uh, tell that inside a create session, what is that you, re you really want to do in your driver. So it's very important. The authors of the drivers should know what is that they need to do in, inside each of these uh, W3C mappings. So create session is definitely something what is, is, a, is a web driver protocol, right? And uh, inside that, it's the driver's responsibility to do whatever they need to do. And that's exactly what we have done over here as well. Yes. Yeah. So now with, we have actually opened a browser, right? we have created that sort of a connection uh, alongside uh, can you also show us another uh, implementation from a web driver protocol like probably uh, maybe the first thing generally which we tend to do is you actually set a url right so what is that what is that command that you want to do for, to setting a url over here maybe i uh, i think we can go back to router.js and see what's the exact command to uh, to be implemented to launch a new url mm -hmm. okay, search for it okay i see there are Two commands one is get url and another one is set url set url also takes a payload param which is required as mentioned in the uh, router.js which is taking a string called url so probably let's implement set url and which yeah. also takes a param called uh, url maybe okay. and 
Just copy set URL and I go back and implement a sync set URL and URL. So since set URL is something, uh, I mean, uh, launching the URL in a browser is something that's been already done by Taiko using a command called go to. Uh, uh, so we could, instead of reinventing the wheel, we could assign uh, directly. I mean, we could call the uh, Taiko method directly and uh, Taiko take care of heavy lifting for us rather than we doing it. So I will just say, await, get URL, go to URL and I will also return it. And uh, this go to is something something coming from Taiko again. So you could see here, go to is coming from Taiko again. And uh, instead of us waiting for uh, uh, navigation to complete, I will also say, wait for navigation. And I will disable that for now. So these are all options that takes care, uh, I mean, that can be given to Tycho's go to. So wait for navigation is disabled now so that it comes out immediately rather than waiting for the URL to be completely launched and everything goes idle and then coming out. So uh, uh, so the set URL is the command that gets called when, uh, let's say, uh, driver.url in uh, webdriver.io is getting uh, called in a client. It internally makes a call to this API uh, called the slash URL, which will get called, uh, which will internally call the set URL method, which is the implementation that we are doing in our template driver, to be honest. Yeah. And Sounds we good. have three commands implemented. One is create session and for delete session, we are just giving the responsibilities back to driver, base driver itself. So base driver can take care of cleaning that session. And we also have a set URL, which will take care of uh, launching the browser. I mean, uh, launching the URL in the browser that it has opened. Sounds good. So, uh, so do you have a do you have a sample test for us to run and show, Shini, how do, how this could work? Um, so I have a simple test here, wherein if you go inside, uh, it's a WebDriver IO test again. Uh, have picked up WebDriver IO client. WebDriver IO internally takes care of driver initialization. Uh, not like uh, Java client where you have to give new Android driver, new iOS driver where it takes care of initializing. So WebDriver IO takes care of it uh, pretty smooth internally. So you don't have to do all of those heavy lifting. In terms of capabilities, as we have said uh, before, so uh, it needs this capability exactly. And uh, here I also specified CDP. Probably I think uh, we have to go back to our package.json and update our uh, name of the driver which you have uh, informed us or updated us in the beginning probably let's make it a cdp driver and uh, automation name as cdp so we could use this automation name inside our test spec android capabilities the mandatory capability here is a cdp i mean which is the automation name and uh, uh, and remaining ones are all usuals and in terms of test, I have a simple test which will launch uh, the URL, which is driver.url of google.com. And also it deletes the session. Once everything is complete, it just winds up deleting the session and comes out of it. So maybe we could try running this. Yeah. Okay, let me quickly start our Appium server. So, um, I'm initializing the Appium server to use only the CDP driver. And uh, just to call out, uh, this driver has already been uh, installed because installing a driver takes a little bit of time. Just to save some uh, time, we have already installed it uh, in our machines uh, before this. Uh, and that's why uh, Sweeney directly started up the Appium server uh, using the, the driver. So I have started the Appium server now, and uh, you could see that it is using the CDP driver that we have implemented. And uh, yep, I have a couple of other drivers too. It looks like I have a UI automated two driver, but for this session, it's going to use CDP driver. Probably let's run the test with the uh, uh, CDP driver and see if everything goes smooth. I have my real device. And again, the 48 tabs are already open. Uh, Probably let's quickly run this test and see if everything goes smooth. So, 
So right now, then Srini, yeah. all the all the calls would typically come to the driver which we just built, right? Yes. Okay. And how do we know whether it's coming to our drivers, Srini? Looking at the Appium logs, do we know is there a way for us that it could typically come in? Yes, uh, we can see here. Uh, it's creating session with W3C capabilities, and these are the capabilities that we have specified. And also, mm -hmm. uh, you could see that Appium template driver is the driver that we have built ourselves. And uh, this is the driver that we have built ourselves. So Appium driver kind of gives the responsibility to Appium template driver as the session got created. And uh, you could see the session ID, and it's also getting the WebSocket URL. It's able to get the WebSocket URL as well here. And it's waiting for launching the URL, I mean, uh, set URL basically. Yeah, and uh, Shini, what is that in the logs, right? We're talking about creating a session over there. So it says Appium template driver. So where is that coming from actually? Yeah, we can go back to our code. We also have a logger. Probably we could see logger.js. Mm -hmm. And here's the name that we have specified as Appium. I mean, this template driver and Appium, it's kind of prefixing it with Appium template driver. Okay. Okay. And uh, so, no, my, my question was other way around, Sweeney. So my question was around, uh, one is the logger. I mean, uh, that is something where you typically say that, you know, any information can be logged to the, to the driver, right? Uh, so is this the Appium template driver, what you have over there, right next to creating a session, is that the same name what you have given in main class or is this the different uh, name? Uh, uh, this kind of the same name that we have given so, it. Okay. Name. Okay. And that way we know that uh, these logs are coming from uh, the driver, which we built just now and uh, not from the default uh, core modules of uh, Appium, right? Exactly. And we also some... have some certain logs inside. For example, if you have seen, uh, we also have some logs added here, which says probably inside template driver create session mm. might mm. get logged here somewhere. Yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, like we, we see that there, Shini, you have used it for the URL, right? So you see template driver URL is WebSocket. Yeah. Just before shutting down, right? Yeah, it is. yeah, that that's the template driver. So that's the logger, uh, right? Which we register. You are, you are right. So let, sound, let's sound. try to initialize the driver and do uh, another run. Okay. I have my spec here. And the server is up and running. So it's kind of creating the session. It is launching the default appium.io as well. And you could see that it is launching google.com because in test we were asking it to launch google.com. And quickly going back to our uh, appium server logs, you could see template driver URL is this WebSocket debugger URL. And you could see new appium template driver session getting created successfully. And once create session command is done, let's say, once create session command is done, you could see that the session gives me 200. We also see it gets call, it calls set URL with google.com and the result is again 200. And once set URL is done, it makes a call to delete session. Sounds good. So that means it clearly maps everything into our driver, which we build, right? And this way, uh, anyone who wants to build their own custom drivers as authors, you have to know what you need to do. And uh, you simply have to uh, map all the web driver protocols the way we did for set URL and you, you, you can actually get going. Uh, so we just took an example of set URL over here. So we have actually published the first beta of the CDP driver. It, it's there and probably you can uh, go ahead and, and, and install it. And we'll be in the hangout rooms after this so we can give you all the links and stuff like that. Uh, so you can also go ahead and, and try if you want to choose to automate your uh, Android, uh, uh, Chrome or any Chromium Brave browsers on your devices through Appium. You could give that a shot. Yep. Uh, cool. So Shri, can we like very quickly run through uh, the recap of what we did, right? For the last 20 minutes, we built a driver. There was a bunch of stuff. So let's do a very quick uh, recap with uh, steps. Step one, 
you have to have this dependency in your package.json and uh, inside that uh, you also have to call an appm node uh, which is called the driver name automation name uh, and uh, platform and step two is you will have to create a, a main class uh, and the name has to be the same what you have given in your package.json inside the appm object and that needs to extend to your base driver because we did say that base driver is, en is encapsulating a lot of these web driver protocols. It's going to help us a lot there. And the step three for us is uh, you'll have to simply map your W3C commands. So set URL was one. Uh, you set the URL and you write any logic uh, over there to open the URL. And from the client side, we simply set a driver.get URL, which would typically call your, uh, uh, your driver. And your driver's responsibility is to handle the set URL and your driver has to take that to say set a URL or open URL, whatever it needs to do over there. And the third is definitely is a build. So the third step is to build. So which means uh, there are commands to build your driver. So you simply uh, run certain RPM uh, CLIs to uh, build your uh, driver there. Uh, which is driver.install, the source can be local. So during our active development, uh, you can install, you have to keep installing it uh, locally before even you publish it to the NPM registry. So you could use source as local or once you've published it, like, like I said, we have published uh, the CDP driver already. So you could say the source is NPM and the driver package name can be CDP hyphen driver. Okay. And uh, once you do that, uh, when you start your RPM server on 2.0, you have to say hyphen hyphen use drivers and you give it a driver name. Maybe you want to, uh, bump in two, three drivers, you could give it a comma separated, or if it's one driver, give it only one driver name, which is the CDP driver for us in our case. And uh, with that, there are also a lot of uh, drivers which the community is already built like a unity driver, unity drivers. If you see unity games, right? So if you want to automate your unity games, check out for unity driver. Uh, so the slides have got links. We'll upload the slides in Confingen, not to worry. So the Chrome DevTool protocol is exactly what we did right now. So we have some betas published, so you can give a try Roku drivers to automate Roku uh, TVs, right? And the uh, UI engine. So that's another driver. So there could be a lot of drivers, but we just uh, found few, whatever we have seen and we have heard in the community and we just added that over here. If you know that you are building some more drivers, please reach to us. We'll be happy to take a look at it and maybe we can familiarize with the community as well. And uh, with the drivers, we also have plugins uh, because Srini said that, mentioned that in the state of Appium, 2.0 brings drivers and plugins in isolation, right? So similar way, there are a lot of plugins. There are certain plugins which is maintained by the Appium devs. There are certain plugins uh, which is a community built, uh, like Appium Wait is a community built plugin, Device Farm, Gestures, and all the last four are community, purely community built. These have links. Go check out, check this out when you're trying with Appium 2.0, hands on. Uh, yeah, that's about the, the plugins and the and the drivers, which is available to the community. Like I said, we know some, so we have done that bits. Cool. We have a workshop uh, day after tomorrow. Uh, if you want to know more, hear more about uh, Appium 2.0 and uh, advanced uh, stuffs related to Appium 2.0, feel free to join us. And yeah. that's us. Feel yeah. free to Thank you. Us. Thanks, everyone. Thanks for holding on and being patient and listening to us. And we are open for questions. Thank you so much for this very insightful session, Srinivas and Shekhar and Shai Krishna. And there's another question, Sai. Uh, where can we find this sample report to build driver? So, uh, want to take that up? Yeah, uh, we have a template created what we just did. So, I'm going to quickly uh, post that in, uh, in the chat as well over here. Uh, and also, we'll add that as a part of the, the slides. So when you go to Confingen, you can also find the template driver link over there.